Okay, this is another inverter project. And if you checked out my other inverter project, you would see I hand wound a microwave oven transformer and used it to convert from 12 volts DC up to 120 volts AC. The output was excellent, considering all I did was use two 2N3055 transistors and a couple of resistors. But the only problem with that particular inverter was the frequency was much higher. You could still use it for resistive loads like lights and a good amount of electronics you could also use it for. But you couldn't use it for anything with a motor or other things like that. So I was looking for a good circuit that I can use to drive the transformer and that's when I came across this particular circuit and it works extremely well unlike other 555 driving circuits I've tried. This one uses two MOSFETs. These are IRF Z44Ns. Each one is good up to about 49 amps. And this one, this particular circuit here, you can adjust the frequency to whatever you want. Now these heat sinks are a little small. This is just for a demonstration. If I was going to use this for an inverter, this would be a lot larger, these heat sinks. And I would also make a couple of changes. This is a smaller microwave oven transformer I had laying around. And I, had, I didn't have any stranded wire around, and it was really a pain in the ass. So I had to hand wind this using solid copper. And it was not nice, but it came out pretty good. And the only problem is I could only get about 20 turns on here, or 21. So my output voltage is a little lower than what it should be. So my output voltage is around 100 volts versus the 115, 120. So if you wind this, you're going to want to make sure you got the 24 turns with the center tap. Now this circuit puts out a lot of power. That's a 100 watt bulb. I'm going to show you what the frequency output is, how I can adjust it. It should be right around 60. It should read 060 when that light is on. I'm going to run this palm sander, which draws around 160 watts, to show you how well that runs. Now, this is the circuit I came across, and I recommend using it for an inverter if you're going to make one. This website also has a lot of other really good circuits that you can put together. And right here is the schematic. Pretty simple, you have a 555 timer, and the pulses that come out, you have your positive pulse and your negative pulse. When the pulse is positive, this MOSFET allows the current to flow through it. So the same time that this MOSFET is receiving a positive signal, allowing the current to flow through the winding, the other MOSFET is off because this transistor is being activated, turned on, allowing the current to flow from the 470 ohm to ground. So you just robbed all your voltage that would turn on this MOSFET. Now when the signal goes negative, this MOSFET goes off, and this one here does not turn on this transistor, allowing the voltage that's here to be used to activate and tr or trigger this MOSFET. So you'll see it alternates, one on, one off, one on, one off and the frequency is adjusted between the capacitor value and the resistor value here but I change this around I put a 100 K potentiometer in between 6 and 7 and I made the 4.7 K and 18 K and I made this capacitor between pin 2 and ground I made that a 0.22 microfarad 0.22 UF so and that allows me to adjust between 30 hertz and like 200 hertz. So this whole thing is perfect. So you can copy the 100K there, potentiometer, 18K resistor for there, and you can make this right here a 0.22 microfarad. Everything else stays the same. The one thing I didn't like is there is no resistor going directly from pin 3 into the gate of the MOSFET. I had, when I was first playing around with the circuit, I blew the MOSFET, and once it blew, the gate of the MOSFET shorted and it went to the negative rail and that overheated and fried the 555. Make sure there's a 470 ohm between that junction point and the gate. 
So I put a 470 there and it works just fine. So now if that does short out, at least there's a, a good amount of resistance to help save the 555. Now this transformer I wound works pretty good, but you need the 24 turns with the center tap. The maximum voltage at 60 hertz is roughly around 100 volts. I can get it to go to 120, but then I'd have to push up the hertz to around 80, 85 to do that. I wound this with 12 gauge. Use 12 gauge stranded wire. Do your 24 turns with a center tap. And look for the largest MOSFET you can find. This is the IRF Z44N. It handles about 49. If you could find a 60 or an 80, it's better to have more and not use it than need it and not have it. So you're better off doing that. And make sure you have a very, very large heat sink attached to each one of the MOSFETs and do not allow them to touch. And you're going to want to also put a fuse in line depending on the current draw. With this setup I have here, to power roughly 200 watts and better, I'm drawing maybe 20, 25 amps. So you need a good size fuse. It's also a good idea to install an IC socket so you can pop that 555 out in case it blows without having to desolder everything. So put a socket there and don't forget the 470. Okay, I'm going to attach the clamp to the battery right now. I have a 30 amp fuse in line right now. I'm now going to connect the positive to the battery. I will then move the camera to the light to show you when it's on after I connect it. And then I'm going to go over to my DMM to show you the cycle should read around 060, which is 60. Here we go. That thing's cranking. And we have 060, 60 hertz. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the palm sander, and that is 160 watt. All right, and this will run perfectly. I'm going to put the switch to on. I'm now going to connect the clamp, and you will see the palm sander come on perfectly. That's at 160, and I checked the voltage. I'm still right around 100. If I want to make these run cooler, I could use a much larger heat sink on each one. I could put a larger MOSFET in on each side, or I could double up with the same MOSFET. Two in parallel here, two in parallel there, and just make sure there's a 470 ohm gate resistor from each one to where this one ties in and from where this one ties in. Okay, we're going to check out the waveform on the scope. You can see the waveform right there. 